Okay, in this calculus lesson, we will be talking about limits at infinity. So the questions will look like this. Let's say we have the limit as x approaching infinity. And let's say we have x minus 3 over x squared minus 8x plus 15. And here, we are not going to be using any graphs or any calculator. We are just going to do the math by hand and reason things out and get the answer. So, Firstly, if we plug in infinity into all the x's, it looks like we have infinity minus 3, which is infinity on the top. And then we have infinity squared minus 8 times infinity plus 15. Let me tell you, infinity minus 3, the 3 doesn't really matter, it's infinity at the end. And then infinity squared, this is so much bigger than 8 times infinity. So infinity squared minus 8 times infinity is infinity. And then you add the 15 to it, you still end up with infinity. So here, we get infinity over infinity, but we cannot draw any conclusion yet. In fact, this is another indeterminate form. So we have to do more work in order to figure out what the answer should be. So let me just make a note on the side. These are the infinity over infinity cases. But don't worry too much. You don't even have to factor the bottom out, even though it's possible, but you can just do this. This is the quick and dirty way. When we are talking about when x is approaching infinity, we just have to worry about the highest power of x on the top, which is in this case, x to the first power. And we also have to worry about the highest power of x on the bottom, which is just the x squared. This is the pre-calculus way to do this kind of questions. And this is, as I said, we are actually just comparing the dominating part of the top and bottom. It works wonders, and you will see we are really just talking about the limit as x approaching infinity. Here we have x over x squared. Of course, we can simplify this. This and that reduces, and then we get the limit as x approaching infinity of 1 over x. And if you plug in infinity into x now, we get 1 over infinity. And in fact, that will actually tell us the answer. When we have 1 over infinity, we get to draw conclusion. The answer is just going to be 0. And then we are done. Just like that. 1 is finite. Anytime you have a finite number divided by infinity, you get the limit to be zero. And have a look. The reason that we get zero, in fact, you can do it in like two seconds, because the power on the top is one, and the power on the bottom is two. If the power on the top is less than the power on the bottom, then the answer is just going to be zero. Let's do a few more examples. Let's say number two. Here, let's say we have the limit as x approaching infinity. Let's say we have x squared plus 3 over 4x squared minus 5x plus 6. You can try to factor the bottom, but you don't have to because we just care about the highest power of x on the top and the highest power of x on the bottom. We're just comparing the dominating part. All right, and then this right here x squared, x squared are the same, you can cancel them out. So just go ahead and write down the answer already. The answer is just nicely equal to 1 over 4. All right. And uh, let's see, I want to put number 3 right here. Let's do one more case. That's the limit as x approaching infinity. Let's say we have x plus 4. And then on the bottom, let's say we have a square root of x. Well, on the top, what's the highest power of x? This right here. And the power of this is 1. And on the bottom, we are talking about square root. I don't see no powers though, so square root, what does that mean? Do we, the, does that mean anything? 1 half, I heard somebody say 1 half, excellent. This right here, it's the power 1 half. And now, as you can see, the power on the top is bigger than the power on the bottom. So we get what? We get infinity. That's all. If the power on the top is bigger than the power on the bottom, we get infinity. 
done deal. So you just really have to focus on these three situations when we are talking about power functions divided by a power function. Pick out the dominating part. Again, if the power on the top is less than the power on the bottom, then you get zero. If the powers are equal, then you get a coefficient. Divide that, right? And then if the power on the top is bigger than the power on the bottom, then you get infinity. So nice and easy. And they say calculus is hard. All right, I'll show you another question. So example number four. Let's take a look at the limit as x approaching infinity of, let's say we have the square root of x squared plus 6x, and then that's minus square root of x squared minus 2x plus 3. All right, let's go ahead and plug infinity into all the x's. Infinity squared is infinity. When we add 6 times infinity, we get infinity. Square root of infinity is infinity. That's the first part. And then we are subtracting. And for the second part, same thing. Square root of infinity altogether, you still get infinity. So for this one, we are looking at a form of infinity minus infinity. So does that mean the answer is zero? No. For limits, remember these are the so-called indeterminate forms. We cannot draw any conclusion. Infinity minus infinity is another one. All right? Hmm. So what exactly can we do though? Well, if you think about it right now, we can't really do too much, but rather we love to do things like this. Compare the powers, right? So let's turn this into a fraction and we can do so by multiplying the top and bottom by the conjugate. So let me write this down again so I can make this super clear for you guys. The limit as x approaching infinity, and this is the original part. x squared in the square root, and then plus 6 also in the square root, and then minus square root of x squared minus 2x plus 3. And let's multiply this by its conjugate, so square root x squared plus 6x, and change the minus to a plus, and then square root x squared minus 2x plus 3. And then over the same thing, square root of x squared plus 6x, and then plus square root of 6, I mean x squared minus 2x plus 3. Now let's multiply this out. Limit as x approaching infinity. So what do we get on the top? Well, remember what we did in the previous video, right here, right? a minus b times a plus b is a squared minus b squared. So going back to here, all we need is square the first term and then square the second term and then subtract it. So we have this. And in fact, you don't even need to show this word. You can just write on the insides, right? But I will still do that for you guys. And then this is the second term. And for the bottom, let's just write down the same thing again. Square root of x squared plus 6x plus square root of x squared minus 2x plus 3. Now, cancel, 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 cancel. It's so relaxing when you do this kind of questions. Just like doing yoga, I would say. All right, anyway, limit as x approaching infinity. On the top, we are looking at x squared plus 6x. And then we have to distribute the minus, all right? We have to distribute this minus. And the square root has been canceled already, okay? So we are going to get minus x squared and then minus times minus becomes a plus and then we have a 2x and lastly we have that minus 3 over the same denominator again square root of x squared plus 6x plus square root of x squared minus 2x plus 3. now for the top we see that this 
and that cancel and then 6x and 2x can be combined in, which is going to give us 8x so we are going to get the limit as x approaching infinity 8x minus 3 over the same denominator get x squared plus 6x and then plus square root of x squared minus 2x plus 3 so that is what we have and then let me just fix this a little bit so I can have more space because I know I'm reaching the bottom of the page ah, much better all right now this is a what this becomes an infinity over infinity case which is like what we did earlier so let's compare the powers on the top we care about the 8x to the first power on the bottom well, here we have x squared by taking the square root. So you also have to account for that. Likewise, this right here is also square root of x squared. Well, square root of x squared is equal to x. Likewise, this is also equal to x. And just make a note on the side for you guys. Square root of x squared is equal to x without the absolute value when x is greater than or equal to 0. All right, because if the x value is inside, then you, you get a negative value. But for this one, just cancel out the square root and the square, you get the x back. That's all. So if you take a look right here, we are actually just going to get the limit as x approaching infinity. On the top is 8x. On the bottom is x plus another one, which we just get 2x. And we see that that is just what x over x is you know just gone and then eight minus uh, sorry eight over two is four. So finally the answer for this is just four. So as you can see, infinity minus infinity give us four for the answer for this one. But of course you can have different answers as well. Infinity minus infinity is not always equal to zero. It could, but we don't know yet, and let's do more work. So, that's it for this right here.